Hi, this is Margot. This is Friday afternoon, August the 21st, 2020. I hope everyone is doing as well as possible. I am had a very strange day today. Just It's just been very out of sync and very strange. But I'm okay and I'm here. And um, we've got new methane data for CAMS and NOAA and all my other updates. But I want to start with looking at the sea ice at the North Pole. This is a picture that was taken by a German expedition crew that actually um, got to the North Pole a couple of days ago and this is what the sea ice looks like on at the North Pole. I was shocked when when I saw this and um, see all this open water it's incredible and it's not very thick. Now on the Navy website this is the area that we're seeing in purple and lavender but um, we you know a picture tells a thousand words and um, th it said in the article that they didn't uh, they didn't they could just um, go right through the ice it was so weak and um, slushy and they could just go right through it and so I'm going to lead off with that article <clears throat> so there's the picture or one of the pictures I'm going to lead off um, th it's published in several different places I the I chose the Barents Observer to share with you guys so we're looking at the Barents Observer. Here's another picture. This is the ship, the Polar Stern. It was a German ship. This was an expedition that um, they set out. It's called the Mosaic Expedition. They set out um, to spend a year in the Arctic sea ice starting in September of 2019 and so that they could study it and so they had been on this certain ice flow in the Fram Strait off the coast of Greenland and then the the sea ice broke up in this mosaic pattern and they were able to just take their ship right through to the North Pole and you can see see the blue those are melt ponds these are melt ponds here um, but this is uh, this is snow on top of the ice and they just took it right through so expedition shares scary photos from the North Pole loose and weak ice with lots of melt ponds partly open water and no signs of multi-year ice the powerful photos from the Mosaic Expedition reaching the North Pole on August the 19th show the dramatic impact of climate changes. And um, this came out yesterday, the 20th. And um, Robin uh, alerted me to it, and we were like, you know, how can these people be celebrating when we're, you know, when it, the, we're losing the sea ice? But you'll see they're, they're like partying it up, celebrating on the boat because they made it to the North Pole. Anyway, few photos are better proof of the climate crisis than those taken by the members of the Mosaic Expedition over the last few days. The Barents Observer has obtained permission to repost some of them showing the current ice cap on the top of the world. The photos clearly underline how several recent climate studies predicting ice-free Arctic summers by 2035 is not a theoretical scenario but rather an unavoidable fact. Oh, it's going to happen way before 2035. And if you want to learn more about the expedition and see their actual press release, you can click on, on that link. <clears throat> the expedition ship Polarstern 
sailed from the northern Fram Strait be green, between Greenland and Svalbard to the North Pole this week. I'm very surprised to see how soft and easy to traverse the ice up to 88 degrees north is this year, having thawed to the point of being thin and porous, said Captain uh, Thomas Wonderlick. Even after passing 88 degrees north, we mostly maintained a speed of 5 to 7 knots. I've never seen it that so far north, the polar storm captain said. He added, the current situation is historic. Not only historic, it's tragic. Um, so there's the picture that I opened with. <clears throat> So they had their they have an icebreaker. It is an icebreaker, but they said that uh, okay, covered with melt ponds and melting from the bottom, the sea ice is no real barrier for the research icebreaker on her way towards the North Pole. The Mosaic expedition is the largest science voyage into polar waters in history, sailing out of. Tromso. In September 2019, the German icebreaker has so far nearly spent one year drifting through the Arctic Ocean. Last fall, across the Barents Sea to north of Novaya Zemlya and Severnaya Zemlya before sailing into the ice and drifting northwest during the polar night season. Well, we know where all of those areas are because we look at them every day. Hundreds of researchers from 20 countries are involved gathering data aimed at getting a much better understanding of the Arctic climate impact. Since sea ice drifts from north of Siberia across the Arctic Ocean to uh, the Greenland Canadian side, multiple year ice used to part north of Greenland. Normally, it's wise to avoid the region north of Greenland because it's home to the thicker and older ice and virtually impassable. But now we're finding extended stretches of open water reaching nearly to the pole. <clears throat> and here's the crew. Here's all the people that they're scientists and and crew crew members and they have captains and I mean. I'm sure they've got cooks and janitors and, you know, the whole thing. A study published last week in the journal Nature Climate Change could tell the serious negative path for Arctic summer sea ice. The study points to exactly what can be seen on the photos from this August mosaic voyage. The shallow pools of water form on the surface of the ice, so-called melt ponds, causes more sunlight to be absorbed instead of being reflected back into space, as is the case with white snow-covered ice. Meanwhile, the polar stern continues to re the research expedition towards east in direction of Siberia and plans for a stop in the ice at about 88 degrees north. Professor Marcus Rex of the Alfred Wegner Institute Helmholtz Center for Polar and Marine S Research is expedition leader. Depending on ice conditions, however, we'll also start looking for a suitable flow in the vicinity of the North Pole so that we could start working on the ice as soon as possible. The researchers' priorities now will be the beginning of freezing and the early phase of ice formation as the ice autumn and winter season starts. So here they are going through it and you can see where it's opened up. It looks like a mosaic. Polar Stern took the shortest route north. On the way the, the sea ice was surprisingly weak and the icebreaker easily broke through. The disturbing photos by this year's Mosaic Expedition follows an escalating trend seen in the last few years. 
The first surface vessel to reach the North Pole was the Soviet Union's nuclear-powered icebreaker Arctica on August 17, 1977. On the 40 years anniversary of the voyage in August 2017, the icebreaker 50 Let Pobity sailed the same route from Murmansk to the North Pole in just 79 hours. The voyage with Arctica took 176 hours more than twice the time. Both icebreakers were powered by the same type of twin nuclear reactors. So that's the story, and um, and if you want to see more pictures and read the original article, it's uh, you just click here Mosaic Expedition, and here this is on the Alfred Wegener uh, Weg Wegener Institute website, and um, and here's mosaic website mosaic videos and they go into their whole expedition and um, it's quite fascinating and here's the latest post where they reach the North Pole and we can just click through all these pictures here's the crew on the ship and Here's um, the chief scientist and the captain hold a steel plaque that was specially made for their visit to the North Pole. And here the same guys are holding it again. Here, Polar Stern Captain Thomas Wunderlich and nautical officers Felix Ken. Kengis and Jacob Lincolnricks after our transit to the North Pole. Here's a photo of Chief Scientist Marcus Rex and Duty Officer Felix shaking hands once they made it to the North Pole. There's one of the pictures. Heading for the new mosaic ice flow, Polar Stern takes the shortest way to the area. Area of interest via the North Pole. On the way north, the sea ice is surprisingly weak, has lots of melt ponds, and Polar Stern is able to easily break it. They're just going right through it. There's another picture. Here's a, a picture of just the ice. Heading for the new mosaic ice flow, Polar Stern takes the shortest way to the area. What an interesting pattern. But this is what we're seeing when we look through all those clouds on NASA Worldview. It's incredible. What a difference. See here the clouds up here. And we're having to look through all those clouds to see the surface. And um, the, these pictures are just invaluable to, to have them. And you can look at, see all that open water. And see here's just some ice this ice has snow on it here's a, a little iceberg that's looks like a little mountain jutting up and that's all the pictures but um, I just the more I learn and study about the Arctic, the more, more I'm just in love with it. I'm just, I wish I'd been a scientist. I wish I was out there. It's just, it's incredible. But um, anyway, it is what it is. So, <clears throat> 
we're going to start now. So this shows that, to me, first of all, that it's much, much worse than we thought with all these big areas of open water. And when we look at the, um, the Navy website, we have a better understanding of what, what the purple is. And when we see the sea ice concentration on NASA Worldview, we have a better understanding and you want to so we now we know that there is a lot of open water and all this open water is absorbing sunlight and absorbing radiation and is heating up and so it's it's much worse than i thought it was and because when you're looking at the models or at the satellite view with all the clouds in the way you can't you can't really imagine what the surface looks like you just have to you have to try to imagine from what the models look like but you really can't you, there's no way to know what the surface looks like unless you can see it and um, <coughs> these these photos are just invaluable I think I'm gonna download all of them